So next feature is portability. So what is meant by portability? Moving from moving from one place to another place. Moving from one place to another place is called as a portability. Okay. For example, consider a Python code. Consider a Python code running on Windows platform. Okay. Suppose uh, I have some security issue in this platform. Okay. I have some security issue in this platform. So I want to migrate my Python code to another platform. For example, consider another platform as a Linux. Okay. I have some security issues in this Windows. So I want to migrate my Python code to another platform. Okay. So migrating uh, the code from one platform to another platform is called as a portability. Migrating the code from one platform to another platform is called as a portability. Okay. So, next one is a high level programming language. So, as I told, Python is a high level programming language. That means it is a user friendly language, simple to use and simple to understand. Okay. So, in high level programming languages, as a an user, we no need to worry about low level activities. Okay. Like memory management, data security, all this will be taken care by the, uh, pro, by the uh, language itself. As an user, we no need to worry about all those activities. Such type of languages are called as high level programming languages. Okay. Next one is, uh, next feature is interpreted. Okay. So, Python is an interpreted programming language. Okay. That means uh, a programming language which runs on interpreter. Okay. So, what is meant by interpreter? Interpreter is one of the language translator. Okay. So, here the code is uh, processed during the runtime. The code is processed during the runtime. So, uh, in interpreted programming languages, step by step execution takes place. Okay. So, because of that step by step execution, what is the main advantage is debugging is easy. Debugging process is easy in interpreted programming languages. So, coming to next feature that is dynamically typed. Okay. So, dynamically typed means for example, consider C language, C or Java, C, C++, Java. Suppose I, if I want to perform uh, addition, simple program, lang simple program addition, if I want to add two numbers, okay. So, how can I write the program within the main function? Okay, first here you have to include header files, hash include stdio.h. Okay, this is the C code I am writing. Even if you do not know, no need to worry. Just for understanding purpose, I am saying, but no, no need to worry even if you know this or not. Okay. So, int a, comma b, a equal to 10, b equal to 20, c equal to int a, comma b, comma c, c is equal to a plus b. printf percentage d comma c okay so here this is a simple c program to add two numbers that means here what i what i what i am saying int a comma b comma c that means i have taken three variables this a b c we call them as variables Okay, I have assigned these three variables to int data type. Int is a data type uh, which is nothing but an int is a data type. I, uh, I am assigning three variables to that int data type. And now I am saying that A is holding, A variable is holding a value of 10, B variable is holding a value of 20 and I am saying C is A plus B. That means perform arithmetic operation between these two. That means C is 10 plus 20 is 30. C is now holding a value of 30. Print of C. That means 30 will be printed on the output screen. This is the meaning of the program. Okay. So, in C language, if I want to use a variable, first of all, 
I have to declare that variable to some data type. Okay. These are variables. If I want to make use of those variables, first of all, I have to perform declaration, variable declaration. Okay. That means I have to specify what is the data type and what are the variables I am going to take. Okay. That I have to specify. That type of specification is called as a explicit type declaration. That means explicitly we have to declare the data type. Okay. So, such type of declaration is called as a static declaration. Static declaration. That means first of all we have to declare the variables to the data type and then we can make use of those variables. Okay. Such type of declaration is called as a static declaration or static type or static type. You can also call it as a static type. Okay. Now coming to Python, Python is a dynamically typed. That means C, A equal to 10, B equal to 20, print of A plus B. Okay. So, this is a simple Python code to perform arithmetic operation. That means to perform arithmetic addition, simple addition of two numbers. So, uh, just like a uh, as I told in C, we have to declare the variable before uh, using, right? Int of A plus A comma B, I told like that. That means, uh, first of all, we have to declare the variable explicitly. But in Python, no need to declare the variable explicitly, okay? No need to declare the type of that variable explicitly, okay? Depending or based upon the value which you have assigned, okay? depending upon this value, the type of that variable is being considered. Okay. As an user, we no need to declare the variable type. Automatically, the value which you have assigned, depending upon that value, the automatically type will be considered in Python. Okay. And also, another one is, another one is, here I have taken a equal to 10. Okay. In the same program, I can also take a is equal to some string hello okay this is integer data type this is a string data type that means for the same variable i am using two different data types that is allowed in python but in other languages like c c plus plus or java no error message will be displayed this type is not allowed in other languages but in python uh, you can assign a different data types to the same variable that is allowed in Python. Okay, that means this value is overwritten to that value. Okay, so such type of languages are called as dynamically typed languages. So, what is the dynamically typed means runtime, dynamic means during runtime. During runtime, runtime means execution time, the type is being assigned, the, such type of uh, such type is called as dynamically typed. So, what is the advantage of this is it is more flexible for the developer. Okay, more flexible for the developer. So, he can use the same variable any number of times and no need to declare the type explicitly. So, depending upon uh, the requirement, I can change the, I can change the, uh, that means uh, the value according to my requirement, which is a flexible thing to the developer. Okay. So, such type is called as dynamically typed. Such type of programming languages are called as dynamically typed programming languages. So, the best example for dynamically typed programming language is Python. Okay. So, see here, A, A is assigned with a value of 10. Okay. And B is assigned with a value of 20 b is assigned with a value of 20. So, print of a plus b, a plus b means a is 10 and b is 20. That is uh, now the on the output uh, I will get an answer of 30. This is my answer, right. Suppose if I want to know which data type, which data type then you have to use this one print of type of a plus b. Suppose uh, if I want to know what is the data type, data type of a print of type of a if you if you write this command okay then it will show it is an integer data type okay similarly if i want to know 
in which address location that variable stored. Okay, if I want to know in which address location that variable stored, then I can write a print of id of a. So, id will give the address location where this variable stored in the memory. Okay, type will give the data type whether it is an integer or float. So, what are the different data types I am going to give? I am going to explain in some other video. Okay, later. Uh, so, print of uh, a means print of A will give see here print of A means this will give the output the value which A value A variable is assigned that is 10 is the output ok. If I want to know what is the data type of A print of type of A this will give the type which data type A is assigned A is holding which data type that value that is printed on the output screen. If I want to know in which memory location that a variable is stored then I have to give print of id of a that will give the some address some address ok like this some address will be this is address of the for example consider this is the address so that address will be displayed on the output screen ok. So, in dynamically uh, in dynamically typed no need to declare the variables explicitly directly you can use the variables and depending upon the value which you have assigned the type will be considered ok and also the same variable can be used any number of times throughout the program ok which is one of the uh, flexibility for the user for the developer such type of uh, programming languages are called as a dynamically typed programming languages. So, dynamically typed the meaning is the data type is assigned dynamically that means during runtime the data type is assigned such type of programming languages are dynamically typed programming languages and python is a best example for dynamically typed language ok. So, next feature is both procedure oriented programming and object oriented programming both procedure oriented programming and object oriented programming. So, procedure oriented programming the best example of our procedure oriented programming is C language ok. But uh, C is missing uh, some of the powerful concepts of object oriented programming like uh, so what are the powerful concepts in object oriented programming objects, classes, inheritance ok, next encapsulation polymorphism these are the powerful concepts in object oriented programming languages ok. C is missing C is missing these powerful concepts right. Similarly, object oriented programming languages they are missing the concise code nature of C. But coming to python as python as I already told python is a all rounded programming language that means it contains procedure oriented programming language features, object oriented programming language features, scripting language features as well as modular programming language features ok. As python contains all these language features we have to uh, we have to go that means depending upon our requirement we have to we can use the python as procedure oriented programming or object oriented programming or scripting or modular. So, the next feature is extensible and embedded. So, what is meant by extensible? Suppose for example, I have python application. So, in that python application I can use uh, some other language code like uh, some for example, I can use uh, some Java code or C code or C++ code any such type of codes uh, in my python application that is allowed in python that nature is called as extensible ok. Some other language uh, code is uh, used in our python application is called as extensible and embedded is reverse of this that means within some other application suppose I have Java application is there. So, in that Java application I can use python code 
I can use the Python code in some other language applications also. That is also allowed. So, this nature is called as the first one is called as extensible and uh, second one is that means using Python code in some other application is called some other applications is called as uh, embedded. So, if you use like this, if you use Python code in some other applications, then the scope of this uh, Python code is improved. So, that is called as uh, scalability. So, the last one is the last feature is extensive library. So, in Python for each and every requirement we have some inbuilt library support is available. For each and every requirement in Python inbuilt library support is available. So, because of that inbuilt library support concise code is possible in Python. Concise code is possible in Python that means with the, within less lines of code we can solve the application ok because of this powerful extensive library support ok. So, these are the various features of Python.